an AD carry pick, but instead, you said it at the beginning, Munch, they have played six games of Wukong so far, and they will continue going. Well, this will be the sixth. You're absolutely right. Xiaobai with four of them. They even brought in CJJ for one game. He also played the Wukong, though, so it wasn't that different of a game overall. And now looking towards potentially the AD carry position, which with Callista and Varus banned away, Ezreal's a very solid pick. I mean, that death stance build on both the Felios, both on the Ezra, has made these such strong champions. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Felios locked in on that opposite side and see if we do get that Infinity Edge Ruins Hurricane into death stance build for the Felios. So now looking towards uh, Fofo, the LMS mid laner that came into BLG earlier on in the year. We'll see if, uh, no, in fact, not going for a mid laner at all. They're going for a Hecarim Dagger in the top lane. So this is very much a skill matchup in the top lane. Would have been very back and forth. Hecarim taking over in the early stages of Wukong. As always, when he gets to level six, suddenly has kill pressure out of nowhere. But we will see Fun Fun locking in the set. There is the opportunity for this to go down to Shousey, but Fun Fun has played this mid as well. So expect that flex pick to go here. Yeah, we'll see whether the set goes. And do you know, every time we see a set in the draft, you never quite know where it's going to go until the draft finishes out. But Zoe going to be banned away here by E Star as we move towards the second phase. And it looks like the mid lane pool in general will be pinched as Kassadin is removed as well. They are already looking going, hey, look, they've got a lot of get into your face here with the Wukong, with the set. And you want to make sure that you're not going to have a casting or something along those lines here for Fenfen, who has played that casting as well already. And I think that means that when you look towards BLG, there's the opportunity here for them to go, right, we're just going to play full disengage, or at least this front-to-back fight that makes it very difficult for you to get in and go for something like the Azir in that mid lane. Yeah, the big thing about Fun Fun, though, is he's already played five different picks this split across five different games. He's played the Set, the Zoe, the Galio, the Kassadin. All of those are either picked or banned away this series. The Echo's still available, though. Curious to see now what we'll see picked up here. They could, could go for the support, but a lot of play teams, as we said before, have been favoring going with the support as that counter pick. But okay, it's going to be way going with the Echo. So right now, Eastar are definitely going to be holding off on the aggression in the early stages, or at least they should be holding off on the aggression yeah. in the early stages. <laughs> Doesn't even always mean that they will, but way will be looking to scale up. And the same with this Ezreal needing to get to those two items before you really are in a position to fight against BLG. We're going to see Fofo on his Azir. This is one of the picks that he used in the finals of the 2019 LMS when he became an LMS champion before moving over to the LPL. So excited to see him on one of these comfort picks once more. Look how strong the front-to-back fighting is from BLG, though. You've got this super tanky front line in the Trundle, the Hecarim, and that Nautilus in the bottom lane. Then you've got your big heavy hitters that are be firing from behind in the Azir and the Aphelios with lots of safety thanks to that Azir Emperor's Divide. So it's going to make it a lot more difficult for Wei on this. Oh, actually, well, it's going to be fun fun in the Echo, but still looking towards the Wukong to get involved and Xiaosi on this set to jump into the mix. Yeah, when you're talking about frontline as well, on the other side for Eastar, it's basically just Xiaosi. Everyone else is going to be pretty squishy, but there is a massive amount of damage on the composition for Eastar. There's a lot of damage there. and I think the way he's there now that we're seeing the way things are going to flesh out with the Graves coming in for Way, they'll be looking to go towards this 1-4, uh, create some pressure around the map, either through Shellboy or Finfin, fin, and then use that to try and get a tempo advantage where they can look to fight four versus five. We'll see if they can find those numbers advantages across the course of the game. I'm just excited for the horsey in the top lane, Dagda. I'm excited to see this Hecarim versus the Wukong and how that is going to pan out. But talk to me a little bit about the Hecarim pick because it's still one of those fringe picks when it comes to the meta. How is that going to function as part of a team? Well, the whole idea here, at least in the lane against Wukong, is that you continuously push in the wave. Wukong, at least until he gets that team out, really struggles to wave clear. So you're just going to shove in, then look to try and roam towards mid lane and have an impact in mid lane. You can also do quite well in surviving that burst combo once the Wukong hits level six. And once that ultimate is down for Wukong, you have a lot of return damage. You can actually got kill pressure then on Wukong. And when you get to those team fights, it's ultimate all the live long day. Be that big engage tool, especially getting onto some of these carries that have to play a little bit closer to the fight, the likes, the Echo, the Graves, and try being be a nuisance for them see if a nuisance is what Kingen will be up on the top side. But when you look at those compositions holistically, it feels very much like for BLG, it's all about the late game. You've got the Azir, you've got the Aphelios. You want to scale up and win these big old 5v5s. But Eastar, 
they're going to come online a little bit earlier. And, I mean, we know E-Star are the ones to push forward with aggression in a game. Anyway, it feels like this composition really fits their style. Especially when you've got Wei on this Graves, he can look to take over the early game jungle. And as long as you've got a little bit of pressure coming from Fun Fun in the mid lane, although it might be a little bit difficult with the Echo into his ear matchup to match the wave clear, he can go towards Dragons, he can try and get some of these set up. So when you then hit that level, or those two item spikes for your Ezreal and for the Wukong, for the Echo, you can then fight super aggressively around this third track. Super aggressively is what I'm looking for in this series, Dagda. But one thing I will bring up here, and it's something you mentioned earlier on, is just because E-Star's composition spikes at a certain point does not necessarily mean that's the point they'll fight at. I can see a very real world here where E-Star just start the aggression right from the word go, even though they've got an Echo, even though they're not necessarily online. And it always makes me nervous when I see them lock in the Ezreal because that is the problem. You have to wait until you've got that tier item completed, until you've gone towards the Iceborne Gauntlet or the Triforce. And you know, he's there a little bit impatient when it comes to some of these games, trying to get out, trying to find these plays nice and early, especially with the back of, or off the back of your man on the screen, Shousey getting these big playmaking supports, has the set here, can do the same thing here again, but we'll have to see if they can at least take it back a moment or two before they try to go aggressive. You could see Fun Fun on your screen there for a second. And he, Fun Fun is a player I'm quite excited about on the team for E Star. And I know a lot of people were quite disappointed to see Cryon leaving this squad going over to RNG and Fun Fun to be his replacement. But one thing that's really exciting for Fun Fun is this is the first time in his professional career he's been on a starting roster without any competition in the mid lane. Back on it, when he started his career on Sooning, he was competing with Angel for the mid spot. And then on Snake, he was with Marla and Andy. Then when Snake became LNG, he was competing with Plex. Then he goes over to LGD and he's competing with Yuki and even forced into the top lane role sometimes back in spring 2020. So. For fun fun, this is like, okay, I can breathe out. I can actually just play my game, not worry about all of these political shenanigans, all of these different roster moves, and I can just play mid lane. And it works on this roster as well, because fun fun's play style back on LNG in 2019 was to tend towards the support, help out with the jungle, make sure we're getting control of that river. And this is the way you start like to play is to play through way, play through Shouse, you allow them to set up these early stage games, either in ganks or through objective fights. And as long as Funfun is supporting these guys, Easter are able to capitalize on what is their superstar jungler and that playmaking support. On the other side of the board as well, when we look towards the mid laners, it's, it's Fofo, which I know that might get a little bit confusing this game, Fun Fun versus Fofo. But Fofo, you know, he was one of these LMS mid laners and he actually won the LMS at the end of 2019. And he came in to replace Kuro. And let's bear in mind that Kuro was a huge part of this BLG team. And when he left, when he went over to KT, he kind of left a bit of a hole in this squad. And throughout spring, we were discussing whether or not Fofo could fill that hole, whether he could be this cerebral mid lane player that, that he needed to be. It didn't really feel like it in spring, but with things like the Azir coming back in, it feels like he's going back to that LMS style that we saw from him before. And I'm hoping he can, now that he's had a bit of time, start to fill that role a little bit more. This pick also feels very Kuro-esque, right, for BLG, because yeah. it was Kuro who would wait around until the late game, he'd stick him on Corky, he'd stick on something that could scale, and then he would just be so damn good in team fights that he'd be able to take over from the mid lane role. But we haven't really seen that from Fofo. This guy, even back in the LMS, was known for his early game aggression, his early game prowess and getting out and moving around the map. But we haven't really got to see that from BLG so far. And it's felt like he hasn't massively been enabled on this team. And now that you've got best 16 coming in, it's going to be under a lot of pressure this game as well from that jungle role. Be curious to see if Fofo will be able to turn it up a notch and bring what was that LMS style, what he was known for back in that region to the LPL stage. Yeah, we'll see if it's going to happen. But I kind of have a, a similar feeling about Wings as well, right? He comes up from the LDL. He's hyped for his team fight performances, right? But we don't really get to see what these guys are strong at on BLG because the proactivity hasn't been there. And that's, it's a weird issue to have in that when we look at BLG, when they lose games, it doesn't a lot of the time feel like they really fought for the win. And I mean, Vici, their loss against Vici highlighted that. 
in game number one, they ended up going in for this fight where they wanted to have their Zoe on two items, they want to have their Ezreal come in on two items and then look for the fight. They fight with an Ezreal on a tier and a pickaxe, they lose the fight, suddenly Vici's 5,000 gold ahead and they're off to the races. And then as well, in game number two, well, Vici just realized we don't need to fight these guys. They're not going to do anything early. We stick for, we stick um, Forge onto a Cassidy, and then we can just roll out until the late game, have our way with this game. And it feels like when we go towards BLG, we need to see that proactivity from them because back in spring at the start of 2020, they were amazing. They were picking up Rift Heralds. They were so clever about how they use it. Pick, yeah. I mean, they had the, the 12 minute inhibitor or whatever it was, this stupidly fast inhibitor terror take and this is the blg that i keep waiting to see to go back yeah. to because it, it feels like the shot calling has just been lost and i think you have to remember as well that this was a blg fresh off of 2019. in 2019 summer they actually came fourth place losing out to top esports in that third fourth match but that was when kuro left right and it felt like there was still like semblance of, of kuro's wisdom on the team almost at the start of spring and then event that's just sort of to started to filter out, I guess. And then once we came back from the break, obviously we had a break in spring for, for COVID and whatnot. When we came back, it felt like a dramatically changed team. It felt like there'd been a lot going on behind the scenes and suddenly the, the mojo was gone. And I'm just hoping that they can move on from that because that has felt like it's been a monkey on their back this entire split. And when I look at BLG, the whole reason that everyone was so excited was not only their play, but look at the caliber of players. Look, I mean, King and coming over from KT Rolster, even back in the Damasi, or not before the Damasi Cup even, his gangplank looked absolutely incredible. He had these really cool carry picks that he could bring out and take over in the side lane. You had Meteor, Rookie of the Year in 2019, who was helping shove these advantages forward. The smart play in when to take Rift Heralds, how to control objectives, and even that Rift Herald usage we just talked about in controlling both who was going to get the goal, but in the right place, the right time, playing towards those team strengths and the team composition strength as a whole. And they looked unbeatable. And I, it did look like BLG were going to be a playoff contender. So whatever happened between the break that we had back in January just completely messed these guys up and that shot calling magic is just lost. It does seem to be that way. But we are I feel like we're being a bit mean to BLG. Well I guess it's not really mean is it? Because it's results based yeah. but I like I'm excited for hopefully what we could see in the future. I'm excited for the fact that they're going to be bringing things like Hecarim to the stage because ultimately, if you're a team that has been struggling, change it up, right? Bring some crazy stuff in. Bring some stuff that maybe your opponent doesn't know how to play against quite as well as just the standard things. And that could be a way of fishing yourself some wins. And bring in some new players. So best 16, obviously, we yeah. talked about Wings coming in to replace Junjiao. So I think when we look at this, these guys, they're new to the, the stage. They're only going to be kind of testing their metal events against some of the best the LPL have to offer. So when we were talking about BLG and the veterancy that was on this team in spring, we have lost a little bit of that. So we'll be looking forward to seeing how Best 16 and Wings both grow over the course of the summer and can become major players for this roster. So apparently there was an issue with the draft, so they just had to go through the draft once again, but they're done with now. They're on to Summoner's Rift and we're ready to get our first game of week number three underway. It's E-Star against BLG, and we've got a Hecarim on the rift. We'll see if they can gallop their way to their first victory of the split here for BLG Gaming. But E-Star, as you can see on your screen, are certainly not going to let that go without a fight. Nice ward placement, though, from BLG to spot out any sort of... Fo oh, way. Oh, no. He took Ignite. What a way to go. But oh no! Like I don't even know what done. to say about that, mate. I don't have words for uh, that. Is you know right? So Dagda, there's a concept I, I, right of losing the game in draft. This is like a very extreme version of losing the game in draft because it's nothing to do with the champions. They just picked the wrong summoner spell. Face breaker goes on in. Best sixteen has to flash away. I mean. It, if you've got Ignite in your jungler, this is the way to at least start things off. Guarantee a buff. 
The thing is, though, you actually get all of your experience from that jungle item. So Wei is massively far behind. He's not going to be able to hit level 2 off this red. He's not going to be able to catch up at best. And we talked about BLG having this later scaling composition. Well, you've just lost your jungler. You sound, you think they can you sound like your can they voice is breaking. I am so... They're not going to. They're just yeah. going to brawl. And that's what I love about E-Star. Wei goes in. Just going to smack Fofo with a shotgun a couple of times here. We're going to be seeing Comet Azir here today, Vector. I know you don't care about Azir's runes, though. So I know sad. you're just looking away so right sad. now. Uh-oh, Wink's in trouble. This is the level 2 power spike that has not been respected. Exhaust onto Wink. Shinmo gets a root onto Shaoxi as well. Good damage across both teams, but I'm actually amazed at how even that was, considering it was level 1 versus level 2. Yeah, I mean, you've got all summoners out from the supports. You've got even try to heal. And Wink and Shaoxi are just about to hit that level two, so they get it an even trade all said and done. So not too bad for the East Star Botany. Well played, well played. And now <laughs> Wei gets his second buff of to the game. To hit level two. Yay. <laughs> yeah, it's took him two buffs to he's already after stealing away Best 16's red buff, he's a level down on Best 16. I was looking forward to a really nice early game from East Star seeing some of that prowess that we talked about, and well, yeah. it's over. Well, look, let's look at what <laughs> PLG can do, okay, to try and punish this. Let's look at the positives. Best is going to be able to have a field day in this game, and this is where you get to show what you're really capable of as a jungler, because you are four versus five essentially right now, where Best can just run wherever the hell he wants, and you can see although Wei is cleared so much of his jungle, going to be massively far behind, and Best. Hitting level three now, we'll be able to move back down towards his Raptors, hit that level four. And I want to see him being proactive now. I want to see him either moving in towards Wayside side so of the jungle to get into his face, especially since he'll have a pushing bottom lane, or just making early aggressive plays towards mid and trying to set Fofo up against Fenfen. So I just want to exemplify what you were saying before about how the jungle item gives XP. Wei has done three buffs and a scuttle crab, and he's still, he's just hit level three now off of Grump as well. He is going to consistently be so far behind in the jungle when it comes to experience. They just have to, they, they've got to find fights, right? I don't see how, like if you just farm, you're yeah, going you're to gone. fall behind. Well, he's already falling behind. And the problem is, how do you find fights? Otherwise, honestly, I'm kind of in half a mind to just pop him into a side lane with Shao Bai and see if maybe you can do something there because he needs <laughs> to get some line. of this minion. You've got to now donate some of your lane farm to him just so then you can even get the the XP sharing. But the problem is that a little while ago, Riot changed the experience, which is why you're seeing bottom lane take so long to hit the likes of the la la that level six mark is the sharing experience is way down on the solo experience that you get. It's not like it's a 50-50 between the support and AD carry. So way by trying to go to a lane to soak experience is instantly going to hurt whatever laner that is. It's going to be a level down once again. And I I just want to kind of set expectation. Oh, here we go, actually. Let's look at Wei, because he's going to make a play happen. King in level five. Ah, and that's kind of the beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Wei comes in, just takes the whole wave. And I don't think E-Star were expected to come in here and have to creatively problem solve quite <laughs> in this way. And the thing is, as King in, in this top lane. Oh no, it goes from bad to worse. Wei is caught out, has to flash. He even used his ignite and should have King in there. Yeah, they would have been able to kill him. I mean, you're only level three is Wei. It's a lot of health and damage that Kingen has off just those two levels. So Kingen now should hit that level six first. We just talked about that experience sharing. And Hecarim has kill pressure when he hits that level six. So the getting to level six point is really crucial in this matchup. And Kingen should just be able to hit it off for this next wave. And it's going to become very... Okay. Oh, actually, Shabai had an XP advantage already, apparently. Yeah, which so. I'm surprised. Oh, Despite being yeah. 10 CS down. I don't okay. know what is happening in this game, Dagda. I'm not quite sure how this is all padded out, but I'm assuming Kingen is about to hit that level six mark. There it is. Wait, hanging around. He knows that they're about to go for a play here. Kingen tries to jump away from himself, but he's actually gonna, oh, he nearly turns it around. 
Shao Bai barely survives. This is an incredibly close matchup in the top lane. You can see it there. No ignite for Kingen. And not being able to kill Shao Bai fast enough means that they're able to get at least the kill back in Wei's favor. And now he's been pushed forward in that experience. So at least with some of these kills and the experience that he's soaking up, getting some advantages for East Stars jump. I thought Shao Bai was going to win the 1v1 there. And then I thought Kingen was going to turn it around and kill him. But Wei arrives gets the kill at the last second and, and saves the day. Every ounce of damage in this matchup. So not having Ignite was such a crucial factor there and Kingen just not able to have that last bit of burst damage that he needed. And that's one important thing to mention actually as well is obviously as Hecarim, you don't run flash because you just, you're real quick actually because you're a horse it turns And you've out. got your ult which is so good at helping you get out of trouble, you know? Chelsea jumps forward. I won't quite find wings there on the Aphelios. And we're looking at the bot lane right now. We, you can see there's a cull on both of the AD carries. Nothing's going to happen down here. Best 16 and way are going to just avoid this like the plague. Oh, Shinmo, though, is not going to avoid Funford. He's found him in the mid lane, forced to flash already. Shinmo wasn't level 6, so they can't quite make anything more happen. So there's that rum that we are talking about from Kingen, who shoving in this wave and top will try and get out to make plays happen. But... As long as this game stays around about this stage, BLG are going to be pretty happy, although they have fallen a little bit behind to E-Star when it comes to the farm. But either way, they don't have to be the ones succeeding in plays. As long as E-Star are falling behind a little bit, that's where BLG can get to that late game stage. And Wei will only start to fall further and further behind because he doesn't have the jungle experience to help him. I mean, that's ultimately it, right? Even outside of the lack of smite on Wei, if you just joined us, take a look on the right. Wei didn't bring smite to the game. It wasn't a strategy. He just picked the wrong summoner spell. Yeah, take an ignite to a smite fight. I mean, what was he thinking? <laughs> no. I feel that's some kind of pentakill album, I'm pretty sure. Um, Chelsea moves into the mid lane here. But yeah, just... Oh, hang on. We do have a fight. Shinmo pulls him in. Haymaker just going to be blocked by the Titans Wrath there. But when we looked at the compositions right at the start, already it was BLG, they just want to chill, they want to get to late game. Now without Smite, Wei and the rest of Eastar have even more pressure on them to make things happen right now. And they're going to be doing that as they go in. Shaozi is an absolute beast, pulling them all in and securing one kill. Wei gets 1v1 in the meantime. Oh dear, it's not good. It is not good. Fun fun. Should be able to chase out best though. Should be able to finish this kill as well. Chelsea is going to make sure there is no way out of this one. And Wei gets... Oh, sorry. Uh, it's going to be fun for grabbing the killing blood. They do manage to get the kill, but the big thing here again, Wei going down. And the problem for E-Star right now is they can't actually contest any objectives. Because anytime they go towards a dragon, a rift herald, a baron, well, you're going to just be out smited by best walking in, smiting, and then walking straight back out. It becomes so difficult to play any of these objective fights. I think this is still possible for E-Star Tactor. Because actually, if they can get a big enough gold lead, it's just not going to matter. They're already one and a half thousand up at this point. If Wei can hit level six, he's going to lethality. He's still just going to one-shot Wings if he finds him. That's going to be the ultimate BM if E-Star's win, but Wings might be cut out. Oh, Shaozi's found him. He's going to be able to get this done with the face breaker. In comes everyone. Haymaker's not enough, though. And now the turnaround from Shinmo. Wei going to be knocked up. One more auto, and Wings grabs the kill. And B BLG are have to turn around. Another play from E-Star's, and Wei is the culprit. It sucks so much for this raise. Now, Best 16, seeing that play happen on the bottom side of the map, will be able to steal away this Rift Herald completely without any sort of pressure. This is exactly what happened with the Dragon earlier on as well, yeah. right? Best is just like, look, Wei cannot win if I just outfarm him and level up a bunch. I'm going to take the Dragons. I'm going to take the Rift Heralds. I know he can't contest me. I'm just going to play the opposite side of the map. And this is going to be a massive, massive story for E-Stars if they are actually able to bring this back because this is where they have to rely on their shot calling. They have to figure out how to play these late games perfectly where they're able to contest but not actually start the likes of these late game dragons, the barons and rely on shell by split pushing, fun fun split pushing and trying to maneuver both of these solo laners back in towards fights with numbers advantages. It's going to be really difficult for E-Stars but this is where they need to see we need to see that growth that happened over that summer break. <laughs> Way is the same level as Chelsea right now. Wings is in a whole heap of trouble. Goodbye, my friend. Four-man dive onto his solo Aphelios. 
They are going to get some good damage onto this tower, but without minions, it does mean they have to back away. Dragon spawning in 20, though. Dragon is spawning. You have to uh, kill Besto before you start it. So keep your eyes to see if Eastar can pick out where this trundle is, kill him, and then turn towards the objective to give them at least a 50-50 on securing that objective. Honestly, if Eastar managed to get a Dragon Soul this game, I will eat my shoe, Dagda, because there's just no way that should be able to happen. Fofo's in a 1v1, and he is annihilating Fun Fun right now. Stun doesn't land. Fun Fun just about gets under tower. King can, I, I'm surprised King didn't just go for that, honestly. I was half expecting it, but the rest of Eastar have shown they walk past a few wards, so not wanting to go over aggressive. And King now making his way back towards his top lane to collect the way the Shell is pushed in. Wei is four levels behind his top laner right now. Shell Bai has hit level 10 already. He's going to be moving down towards the bottom side of the map. King has TP, though. Moving Wait. in towards the strike. Oh, Smite's on cooldown. He used it on the, on the crab. Go, go, go. Time to fight, apparently. This is not a fight that they can win, though. They're already outnumbered. Fofo just about gets away. Knock up onto Fun Fun. Forced to chrono break, but Xiaobai has got in behind them. Gets one kill, and now he's going to look for the rest of the team. Cyclone available. Gets a knock up, but the Onslaught of Shadows dodges the knock up. Beautiful from King and Wings still alive. Wink comes in from the backside. Xiaobai, though, he's just, just isn't tanky enough. And now Wink. Finds himself completely and utterly alone. Rampaged on through. But he can't quite actually finish the kill. So this is a comedy of errors from E-Stars. With Wei not being able to fight, he's behind in levels. With Wink, we talked about him only having a tier and a pickaxe for these fights. It, well, that's exactly... Well, he has the Sheen on top of it, but still not a position where he really wants to fight right now. BLG even get to the fight in a better position with low health bars on E-Star. I don't know what Eastar were thinking trying to take that fight. Yeah, and Wink at the end of it as well. Discovered the meaning of a devastating charge, honestly, because yeah. that was a lot of damage coming out from King and on the Hecarim. And he got two kills in that fight. He's going to only get stronger. And you see here, this is the super long TP coming in from Xiaobai, but look at the health bar. So already xiaobai has gone. Fun Fun is running after Fofo, but he's going to have to back away. And it becomes so easy for a BLG to just turn onto each different member as they funnel in towards BLG. So Eastar are able to get a few kills back in the favor, but still, BLG end up winning out in this trade. And honestly, it's it's just like Spring Xiaobai towards the end of Spring consistently was one of the real shining lights for Eastar consistently. And he was one of the first ones to bring us this Wukong to the stage as well after the rework, still living up to his name on the Wukong. Yeah, and he looks great. I mean, it has been so crucial for Eastar, as you said. They love these big engages. They love the opportunity to fight. And Wukong does well in skirmishes. He does well in these big team fights as well, too. So as long as you've got this monkey involved, there is a chance that Eastar can find just enough disruption that Wink and Fun Fun can carry. But unfortunately, you're still lacking that jungle into invention. So, hang on, best 16 might be in trouble here. Face breaker available for Shaozi. He just goes for the showstopper instead, pulls them all in because Fun Fun's flanking and the Haymaker across them. This is a beautiful fight from Eastar as Shinmo will be taken down as well. Fofo is behind them, but he's pretty lonely himself. Best 16 gets to the turret. It's still going to be surviving there. And Kingen is about to arrive. He's ready to rampage through the squad. He's ready to get some charges off. Shaozi going to get a face breaker onto King and denied, but he just is so damn tanky and has so much damage. Fofo looking to chase as he pushes way away. Xiaobai not able to join in and King and is huge now. BLG will lose their top lane turret, might be able to trade in this bottom side or at least pick up the dragon for themselves, but still a little bit more gold going over towards East. Another kill for King and, and another team fight win for BLG. Bear in mind, best 16 is still up. They could look towards the dragon here. He's already started. The Trundle right now is starting off that dragon. So BLG wanting to answer for the turn in the top lane and still get the dragon. So once again, BLG, although it looked a little bit messy to begin with, do end up finding that fight victory. But when we come to these later fights, I want to see BLG actually prepping properly for them. Moving into the river, grouping as five, having this strong front to back. So it's not as easy for Shaozi to go for these crazy big engages on the set. You've got that separation with the Emperor's Divide, and then you can deal with this set while you're keeping the rest of E-Stars at bay. And let's just kind of 
set an expectation here for how important this win is now for BLG because you've not won a single game this split. You went 0-2 twice, once against Vici, once against FPX. You've been gifted this game on a platter. You've now got the gold lead. You've got two dragons. You even have the better scale and composition. BOG have to win this game if they want to look like a team in the LPL, let alone anything else. Yeah, I mean, look, you've already set yourselves off on a poor foot as E-Star. So when you're this team that relies pretty heavily on finding that two item spike that Wink is just about to complete, and then solidifying that lead, you need to make sure you're hitting the ground running but we're way slightly further behind. Well, now that pressure becomes doubled down on to Funfun, on to Wink, and Xiaobai as well to be the big carry. So we will have to see if they can carry for the unfortunate mistakes that Wei has had so far. But BLG are still looking to double down, get these Rift Heralds. Xiaosi is just not going to let this game stop, though. Go straight in onto Shinmo. I mean, the showstopper stopped absolutely nothing, right? <laughs> it goes in, nothing happens, they all back away. Still though, two towers so far going over towards E-Star without that Rift Herald, so they're doing a reasonably good job so far. In on towards the tower here. Wings is around though, they can definitely find this one. BLG, as you can see, both of their solo laners moving in from the sides. Fofo potentially looking for a flank. TP's not quite finished for either the top laner, so gonna take it a little bit slower on both sides, but still BLG off of Fofo's pushing the top lane answer back for those two towers. And you can see right now, the gold lead is pretty much dead even. So it will come down to a lot of how teams operate in these fights to try and pick up the advantages. So now, BLG find themselves their fourth neutral objective of the game. This will be their second Herald. They already got two dragons as well. And Best is having a whale of a time. This is the dream scenario. If you're the jungler in this game, this is the dream scenario. This is the creme de la creme. You get a game where the enemy jungler literally can't contest neutral objectives, even if he wants to. That is just as good as it gets. If he misses a smite, though, this I game, know. my lord, is Reddit and Weibo going to go wild. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be that guy. Wink ooh, ooh, takes a tower shot there, but Kingan's getting low. I mean, Wink is happy to. He can use his ult here to clear out the wave. Now they actually have a lot of pressure on this mid lane because Fofo's gone back to base. You've just knocked out Kingen, so the E-Star should be able to get this. Oh, not quite. Wings is here to clear the wave, though. He can't quite push it on in. And, I mean, it's exactly what we said before, though. This is E-Star. Even without a smite, they're still going to be aggressive. They're starting to play these side lanes, though, pretty smart. So Fun Fun is pushing in the top. You've already got bot lane pushed in. So now you're spreading... BLG across the map because already Kingen's got to go down to that bottom lane. Someone will have to deal with this top wave and it'll give the opportunity for E-Stars to look for flanks underneath this turret. And Wink gets to just sit around in that mid lane and just clear every wave as they come. And as you rightly say, Fun Fun consistently shoving out in the top side, moving down towards the rest of his team. Baron will be spawning in 15 seconds there, but also we're going to see Drake on the map once again in just over a minute. And you'd expect that to be a priority for BLG. The question will be, can E-Star contest it before the matter? Can they find a kill onto Best? And it becomes really difficult because Best is so tanky right now. He's already got his jungle ladder completed. He's got that Glacial Shroud as well. So he'll be starting to get a lot of armor, be able to steal away a lot of these stats with the Subjugate. So trying to pick Best it's kind of a good spot for BLG. If you're investing all these resources and trying to kill one of the tankiest members on BLG, well, then you've got Wings, who's free hitting, Fofo's free hitting, and Kingen, who's probably decimating your backline. I do want to bring one topic up here before this Dragon fight kicks off, and that's that we're in the LPL, Doctor. But you know what? Even I didn't with this. I know. Yeah. Crazy, isn't it? Even without a smite, Wei is only one level down right now versus his jungle opponent. And. This region is often determined by the team fights. I think that E-Star have the ability to win through team fights. Fen Fen thinks so too, as he goes straight in with a parallel convergence. He's gone real deep as he tries to get onto Fofo, flashes for it and pushed away by the Emperor's Divide. Uh, Fen Fen, what are you doing, my friend? He's trying to get onto Fen. That was awful. That was the worst thing I've ever seen. Now the fight really kicks off Cyclone onto Shinmo, who's been left out alone by the rest of his team. Damage isn't quite there. Yes, it is. Wink finishes it off. King and forced away as well. Pings towards the mid lane here. I mean, look, East Star don't find the fight. They, well, they do find the fight, sorry. They're still able to get the three kills off the back of it, even with Fun Fun going 
very deep. Best is up though, so there is the opportunity for him to look for a steal, but not gonna contest. Happy to give a Cloud Drake over towards Eastar. So they do find that fight the way they wanted to before the objective. They've got a dragon for themselves, Dagda. They're three away from me eating my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know if I'm willing to commit to that. It's uh, too late. We can chop it up, we can cook it later, but still. So here, yeah. Fun fun going super deep and as he said, like committing so much here. I think he was trying to predict the Emperor's divide to get over, but King and well. So we missed the kill on wings because we were looking at, at Fun Fun during the fight. And then while we're looking at the kill onto wings, there's another kill onto Shalvai. And this is King in finding his home. We talked about how strong of a carry top laner he is. Well, happy on this Hecarim, picking up the kills. Fun Fun committed to the bot lane. BLG, you've got an Ophelio. And you're not going to be able to steal with a spite, that is for sure. E-Star, they've got to make a miracle happen right now, and Wink might just be the one to do it. In goes the True Shot Barrage! Oh, I thought he got it then, he got best instead. Damage across the team here. It's going to be one for zero in terms of kills. Wei getting aggressed upon by King, and who jumps in. But it's only on to Shaozi here, Haymaker across the team. Fun Fun wants to go in. Here comes Shabai as well. He's going to have Cyclone available. And he's looking for a way in towards the squad. Knock up. It's only onto Shinmo here as they push him away. But Shabai goes down himself. Shaozi now into the fight. But Fofo's there as well. Fofo gets himself a double. Wings with a million shuriken. Wants to turn this one around. Wants to do his best in axe impression. Double kill now. Onto Wink King. And oh, he wants that Ezreal. But he has to gallop away. BLG, though, still get the Baron, so it's a two for two with Baron to BLG. So they can now look to enact their game plan, start pushing in these waves on both sides, moving to group and forcing difficult decisions onto Easter. I love that we are seeing Hecarim in the LPL once yeah. again. I love that we're seeing Hecarim in the meta, but I also love that this skin is basically a must. Like every Hecarim you see, it's Arcade Hecarim. <laughs> And you hear that little doo -doo 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 every time they go in and, and one-shot someone. It's beautiful to see. He's got the death stance, though, which means he is real tanky. And this is what I love to see from King. And when he came over to BLG from KT Rolster, I was like, this guy's a carry player. Let him be a carry. And that's exactly what BLG have allowed him to do now in this game. But this was oh. a strange decision from BLG. You've already got the Baron. Why do you need to fight here? Trade one for one. Get out of there, keep your Baron onto multiple members, but trying to fight where Kingen has no ultimate, so you don't really have that front line in your Hecarim and your Trundle. And then it's easy for e to start wandering in here. Shousey just waiting on that timer as well for his ultimate to come back up to set up the play for e oh, barely surviving at the end of the fight, but obviously Wink was able to shut him out in the end. And uh, Kingen maybe has been found out this time. He is still Hecarim, though, and he's real good at escaping Onslaught of Shadows. He's going to feel away, but he got over the wall in time. Now the rest of the squad arriving away. Flashes away. Best wants to shut him down, wants to finish this kill. And he's going to be able to do so here. No way out for the Graves. Now wants to Shousey. He's got Deadman's Plate, so he's going to be real quick. And Shinmo is kind of lonely over there. Still going to spike damage across the team. In comes the True Shot Barrage. Maybe they can turn it around this side. Everything landing. Fofo's still alive though, and he gets himself a double kill. Wink doesn't have the damage to get on in. Fun Fun wants to get onto King, but he can't. Wink goes in. Fofo uses the Zonias to keep himself safe. There's a minion to block the Mystic shot. King and charging on in. Fun Fun's in trouble. Might just be able to survive. No, he can't. In goes King and clops him down with the hooves. And in. Fofo trying to get the recall. He's on award. Oh, Kingen's looking for Wink, though. This fight will never end. I don't know why Kingen isn't just running straight at him, to be quite honest. Has to be careful of the Iceborne Gauntlet, and that Death Dance is doing so much healing. I don't know if Kingen wins this fight. And Kingen's on the wrong side of the fight as well. Way now arriving. Uh, I don't think you want this, Way. <laughs> Way, I don't <laughs> think you can win that one. But Wink is here. One more auto. Wink is 10-1-4 and four right now, Dagda. I was about to say, E start at the start of that fight. It all looked disastrous because Wink has every ounce of gold on this team. He was 6-1 before that fight started and couldn't get into the fight because Shinmo was keeping him away, which meant BLG at the start looked fantastic. But when Wink joins these fights, that's where he's able to come into his own as the AD carry. And this was the guy we were praising coming yeah. over from RNG in spring, and he's stepping up here in this game. And look at the dragon timer, look at the respawn timer. 20 seconds on each of them, King and with no teleport available, 
But Esau don't have Smite, so they need to try and find some kind of fight here. The good news for them, and for all E-Stars fans, is that Shellboy has his flash. As a Wukong, that flash is amazing, because you can use your clone to close the distance, flash in onto the back line, and set up these fights so successfully, alongside Fun Fun as well, who can provide quite a lot of that damage. But here we go, BLG, they think, nah, there's no way E-Star are going to start this up without a smite, so it will get taken, not willing to move into the pit in case Xiao Bai was able to find that big engage alongside Xiao. And I think basically also saying, look, it's just a cloud drake. It's only their second one. We're not too worried about it, especially with King and not in the right position. Xiao Si is in the right position, though, as he wants to try and start a fight onto best 16. Gets spotted out, and Wink will be able to clear away the control ward as they move back through the jungle. Honestly, can I just say, Dag, that I'm so impressed that E-Star even yeah. have a hope in this game. So am I. I really thought that BLG would have been able to punish this harder, farm super aggressively, do a lot more with the dragons and the rift heralds, but E-Star have done a good job of answering for where BLG were putting the pressure. And even though Wei is essentially, a, well, not so much now a man down for E-Stars because he's been able to get towards some of these lethality items, well, BLG, this was the problem. No proactivity, not really able to secure early to mid-game leads, and they're struggling now when, as he said before, Munch gifted this early game. Once again, though, they scale real well with an Aphelios, with an Azir as well. Fofo has been playing out of his mind this game, trying to carry these fights. And Wings, he's on the three-item mark, so he's very much online at this stage. If he can just free-fire in the fights, it's going to be very difficult for Eastar to do much. I'd love to see Wings pick up that death stance, that it would work so well against what Eastar are trying to do and provide a little bit more security for Wings if he's trying to get burst out by Xiaobai and give the time for Fofo and Shinmo to reset these fights and give Wings a little bit more maneuverability in, the, in these big L scraps. So one thing that is ever so slightly annoying in League of Legends right now when you've got a Lich Bane proc, it looks the same as when you've got Herald. Rift Herald. Yeah. And it gets me every single time, man. I'm like, I, I, how does he have a Rift Herald at 20 I minutes? I was going to say, the 28-minute Rift, uh, Rift Herald is definitely the deadliest because you don't expect it. You, you really don't. Yeah. It's the Spanish Inquisition of neutral objectives, that is for sure. That and uh, Aphelios Azir Barons, which we really could see this game. Yeah, That Baron take is pretty darn scary. We've already seen it before. They were able to take that pretty handily as BLG. They just decided to go for fight after for some reason. But hopefully learning from their wounds and now coming back to have a little bit of a better time here. But Easter have only got Chelsea hovering around I here. I don't know what he's doing. He's just like, come on, guys. I'm looking for... He's role-playing set right now. He's like, come into my fighting pit. I'll take you all on. Actually, Shousey didn't get spotted there on that ward. So now away will, but they have no idea Shousey is in this bush as far as I know. So there is the opportunity here for Shousey to set up a pretty big flank. And the biggest issue for E-Stars when it comes to these Baron fights is how well BLG can hunker down in these jungle paths coming up to the Baron. So if you've got Shousey in this fantastic uh, flank position, he can completely disrupt this front-to-back fight that BLG are looking for. BLG are looking for a straight up fight right now. Wei has to use his collateral damage just to get himself to safety there. I don't know why, but Wink really hates Shinmo right now. Xiaobai wants a massive Cyclone. There won't be a huge amount of follow-up from the team right now, though. Two knockups for him to start this one off. Wings and Fofo still safe. You've got to keep your eyes on the Azir in this fight. Kingen going to be charging around. He's going to stick to his team and they found themselves a free tier two. They get the tier two. They get the teleport out of Fun Fun as well. And only for Shinmo's health bar. As long as he stays standing, you're fine. So big engage ah. tools from E-Stars down. Yeah, there were pings on the Baron right there, but this team can take down Nexus's real quick. They need to get back. They need to get back now. BLG, Whoa, I thought they were going to pull the trigger. I thought they were going to try and end the game. I'm going to back away in Easter, the end. have to be careful, but Chelsea's here. Chelsea's behind them. He's on to wings, pulls him into the squad. Cyclone's on cooldown still, but he'll be back up soon. But the health bars are too low for E-Stars. This isn't a fight that they're winning. In goes King in, and down goes the health bars. E-Star forced away, and everybody surviving until Fun Fun trades one and maybe stops them winning the game. Wink is still able to turn out a whole heap of damage. 
Shaozi trying to get on towards wings, but the problem was there's no follow-up CC there. Shaobai didn't have his ultimate available. Fun Fun didn't, wasn't able to get in aggressive because he as well didn't have his ult up and available. So a lot of these tools aren't quite there. So when that comes down, no follow-up CC to keep wings in place. He flashes out. You don't even have to get the... Oh, there's actually no mana for the zero ultimate there for Fofo, but the Severum, the Crescendum, the healing, it's all Wait, working what? wonders. How is Wei dead? Why is Wing here? What just happened? Uh, I have no <laughs> idea what happened. Wei got caught out alongside Wing. So far in for BLG. I mean, it's not like the Smite has died because Wei never brought Smite to this game. So I guess it was already theirs to take. There's the Smite onto it. Xiaobai has found himself with Wei onto Fofo though, but Azir survives, barely. Haymaker across the team and they're gonna be trading. King and goes in, Wink. This is all on you, my friend. Best desperately trying to survive and he will be able to very easily because Wings gets a triple and he's looking for a quadra right here. Although he's in trouble because Fun Fun wants to do exactly the same thing. Zonya's on him, he's gonna have the Chrono Break available. We'll go for that, but no real damage to be had. Wings gets another one. In fact, Kingen steals a quadra. And now it's Wei versus three. He just uses <laughs> ulti. Okay, this is... All right. Okay, take it away, Munch. Let's, let's, let's run yeah, this one out. Yeah, I don't think this one's going on any longer. 24 to 22. And you know what? E-Star. I'm thanking my lucky stars that they didn't bring Smite to this one because it meant we got an absolute brawl. It meant we got a fun to watch game here. And it meant the BLG get their first win of the season. 1-0 BLG. They've defeated the Smiteless Jungler. So BLG managed to take on the training grounds and now they've got to take it up a step where fighting essentially four versus